Hi guys, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio, I'm Dodge, and here we are again this month, we have another product review. What we have this month is the Fantasy Painter Core Set, which is an expansion to the review we did on the Starter Set a few months ago. Now in this set, there's another 20 paints, technically 18, two of them are washers, there's two metallics, and they've added a fine detail brush in this time, so I'll be taking a good look at that, because if you remember the previous one, I was not impressed with the base layer brush and how the bristles moved. So let's uh, go to my desk, have a look through all these paints and then we're going to compare what's in the two sets and how they work together as well. So here's the box, uh, close up and slightly different design to last time. I've got some spider webs and some fantasy spiders on there I guess. On the back, uh, as you've seen on the rotation, there is a, a lot of colours. This again comes with uh, two dark, uh, two washers, two metallics, and I noticed as well. There's a lot of blues and muted tones for this one, whereas the beginner series was a lot more solid, bright, prime colours. So let's open this up and uh, have a look. Also, there's a difference here. This one did come with a, what well, I believe is a catalog. We will have a quick look through this as uh, it does show a few things. And that's just a, another catalogue pamphlet showing your flocks and all the bits and pieces that the army painter guys supply. What I noticed when flicking through this is uh, this whole colour section here. So there's a lot of useful information as it's a core set to go on the beginner set and now it's a good place to put the information really. And that's what I wanted to show you. This is the War Paints Army Painter Paint Collection. As you can see, there's a lot of blue and a lot of red, which is what's sort of been reflected in this box set. So we've got a nice selection of these blues already, and a nice selection of these reds to yellows and oranges. So back to the actual paints themselves, so we can have a look through these. It comes in two trays, same as the last one, with uh, ten paints in each. Now, I've... Uh, Obviously they've done the audio after this, so here is the brush. This is more of a detail brush, and i got to say, after mucking about with it, the bristles on it are very fine and very soft, which does give a decent amount of control. I could see myself using this. If you've got both these sets, you've got yourself a, a basing brush and a nice detail brush. As you can see there, I'm putting it in my mouth and pulling it to a point so you can see the uh, bristles a little bit better. So when it comes to the colours, this uh, scaly hide, it's, this one I believe is not one in all our paint collection that we've got one that's the same as. Now, Banshee Brown, again, it's in that sort of Games Workshop, Carrick Stone, Bane Blade Brown area, but it is slightly different to the rest. Got Elven Flesh, Ice Storm, again, um, it fits in between all the other blues you'll have from all your other sets. Now this was a nice one, the Orc Blood. This is a, a pretty basic purple, but it looks a little bit more flat than the regular purples. And then we've got the was it Ooze Purple as well, which is a bit more blue. It's nice that they added a couple more yellows into this, as both sets were missing a, a, a bit of yellow. And as you can see there, the Necromancer Cloak is a very dark blue, a very muted dark blue. Green skins is, as you can imagine, a green skin. So it's got that cartoony sort of thing. Red dragon, very blood red, but it it is sort of between Mephiston red and Wazdaka. Tan flesh, it's sort of like a squig orange mixed with Tusker fur. Um, some of these I'm obviously not talking about because they pretty much look like most of the other colours that you've probably already got on your shelves. The metallics are going to be interesting. I always like to see how they spread, um, see what kind of coverage we get. And I already know this for a fact that the tones that they send are always superb. The dark tones actually a bit more dark than the null oil. So, Here's a nice selection of the blue colours just from this box set, or anything that fits into that sort of spectrum there. Which, 
yeah, that's a decent collection of blues. Just mixing and matching those on a palette, um, you can pretty much achieve anything you want. Obviously, you'll already, already have a black that you can mix into the Necromancer's Cloak to make that even darker if you need to. And I'm going to do the same thing here and show you the sort of yellow-brown spectrum collection from the same box. And, uh, yeah, so we've got a lot more in the yellow area this time than we did before, and the blue. A little less in the way of reds, but we got reds in the previous selection. So we've got a dragon red there, which is the one that's sort of Mephiston, Wazdaka red. And we've got two greens, because we've already got a few from the previous set. And again, we don't have much in the way of the purples either. And our two washers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this Chaos Marine, and I'm just going to start throwing some paint on him. So I'm going to start mucking about with Monster Brown. Don't expect a great paint job here, what I wanted to do was just put some layers down, check out the metallics and throw down some of the washes over some of these colours just to see how they tone. Now I went straight to the true copper as I was just interested into the coverage and as you can see there, the true copper I like that, it gives a very nice coverage. Which is a, something it's sometimes difficult to get when you water down metallic paints but this seems to go on very smooth so... I can see myself using this one quite a bit. Shining Silver, which I'm just going to do these what was it, pipe things up the side of his armor. Again, this one gave good coverage, although it was a, a little bit lumpy, but maybe I just didn't water that one down enough. As you can see there, it d does give very nice coverage over that black. Next, I'm just going to paint half of this marine in wolf grey. Just so we've got a colour comparison between the two. Now I do like the wolf grey. It's pretty much like a space wolf grey. It's a slightly different tone. So if you're into painting space wolves and you're trying to find an armour. Which is a mixture of a mixture of Games Workshop paints, scale 75 and these paints. It's definitely one worth having because it's got it's own sort of tone to it. Now we're going to throw that green skin on as well. I did find the green skin. I don't know whether it's the pigment in there. It didn't spread as well as the blue. But yeah, I'm just going to paint the other half of the model in that. Next, Ice Storm, which without any effort or mixing into the wolf grey is a perfect highlight for the wolf grey. And as you can see here, I'm just mucking about without a army paint or brush as well. I do like how fine that nib is. If I wanted to do feathering or glazing with it in small areas, it would work very well. So I am quite happy with this brush. Next, I'm going to use Scaly Hide on that green just to, chest, uh, just to check that out. This is not exactly a painting tutorial. I'm just seeing how these colours react. Now I'm going to muck about with a Banshee Brown and use that as a highlight for the Monster Brown. Also, that doing this with the model shows you that these colours will just highlight other colours in there. So it is, generally altogether, a pretty good set. After Banshee Brown, I'm going to throw some tanned flesh on that head. The reason I didn't go straight to tan flesh is I didn't think the uh, tan flesh would be able to cover that black. And a good way to get from black to a lighter colour is to paint it brown first. It does make it is a good base colour for some flesh. But obviously you could use either sets of paints on each of these sets. So now I'm gonna throw on some soft tone. And I'm just gonna launch that all up the uh, on the arms rather than on the legs, so we can compare the difference. I'm gonna put some on the head as well, I think. This is uh, to show you the colour of the actual soft tone itself, you know, using these different underneath surfaces. It just give you a good feel for how these uh, tones work. I really like them. It's definitely something worth having to expand your Games Workshop collection of washes and glazers. As the Games Workshop ones are quite limited. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with a dark tone. All over the same areas and just spread that out. I do find the dark tone tends to sink. I think it's because 
it being such a dark tone, the pigment in it's ever so slightly heavier, so it does sink and actually go around the edges of your recesses like an oil wash would, or a pin wash, which uh, I found kind of interesting. I've used dark tone before, uh, as you can see, unlike the Agrax Earthshade or the Null Oil that's got a slight brown reddish hue to it, this is a much straight dark black wash, and I can definitely see that being useful might be able to replace an oil wash with a wash with this all right so here we have both sets <clears throat> as i have lined them up for you um you can see exactly how many paints you've got and i've put them in a cut sort of color coordinated order so you can see what goes next to what i've got all those blues there that go from blues to a light gray to a dark gray to black and white we've then got a uh, our browns and bones which we've got a nice collection of and this becomes apparent what I was saying earlier we've got four greens which is plenty to start off with and then we go from red to a, a flesh tone going through all those oranges and yellows that we've got so we've got a good row there of blues and oranges and some brown tones and uh, got a couple of purples as well so that's both sets side by side and you can see what they've done here and they've added the starter set and the core set really well together to help expand your collection and get something really nice going if they do another box set at some point i'm hoping they do something with some of the uh, purples and greens maybe some bright greens purples and some muted greens purples and maybe some other types of grays in there as well so at this point if you've bought both sets you've got 40 40 paints and two brushes and it's a very reasonable price so we've come to the end of the video and my conclusion on this box set, the core set, is I really like it. I really like the tones and colours that are in there. Some of them are colours that we don't have for other sets. So we can mix and match there and find tones and colours that we want. And as you've seen, it stacks very nicely with the first set, giving you a really good collection. Um, mainly in the blues, reds and orange departments. Um, if they bring out another set at some point, I'm hoping there'll be more purple, greens, and in-between tones. That would be pretty cool. The brush was a definite improvement from the uh, last set, but the, the first one was a, a starter set, so it was only a basing brush. And uh, I was, I'm really happy with the set, so I'm going to give it 9.5 squigs out of 10, because as Andy says, nothing should get 10. It should be almost impossible, but I am really happy with that set. Lots of interesting colours in there. I do like the brown tones in there as well. Uh, and as always, the army painter washers and tones are really, really good as a add-on to the Games Workshop ones that you've probably already got. So it just gives you a little bit more variety in the, in the washing area, in the shading area, um, which can you can never go too wrong with that. So if you want one of these box sets yourself, link is in the description. This is an Amazon exclusive, so you're only going to get it by following that link there. Don't forget to check out all the other links, the Facebook page, all that lot. All the good stuff's in the description, so don't forget to check those out. And that's pretty much it from us. So don't forget to uh, hit like, hit subscribe, share with your friends, and go check out our actual painting tutorials as well. Right, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.